Welcome to Joyce's uh, geometry class. Uh, this, in this lesson, we will introduce you to statements, compound statements, and make some basic true tables. So first, let's look at what is a statement. So uh, a statement, look at the definition. A statement is a decorative sentence that is either true or false, but cannot be both uh, true and false at the same time. So let's do an example of, uh, of statement. So example one, determine whether each sentence is a statement. A, do not open the door. Again, think of the definition. A statement is either true or false. And the phrase, do not open the door, there's no true or false to it. When I say true or false, it doesn't really make sense. And the do not open the door, that sentence is a statement, is a uh, command, so not a statement. So this is not a statement. The sentence is a command. Okay. Now let's look at uh, part B. Part B is 7,055 is a small number. The keyword here is small. Okay, what is small? So let's think about 7,055 in terms of money. For me, I think 7,055 is a lot of money. You probably can pay off all my student loans in etc. So for me, it's small, but for some, I might think that is nothing. So I might spend in one day of shopping trip. So small is not very precise. So therefore, this is not a statement. Um, because the word, the word small is not a precise term. Oh, let me write it a little better. Okay, now let's look at part C. Part C says x is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, let's think about x. x is a number. Let's think of it as a number. If I pick a number, um, let's see what happens. Say, pick any number you want. Say, pick x equal to, say, I don't know, say 5. If x is a 5, 5 is less than 10. So this is a false statement. It's false. But if I pick x equal to 100, 100 is greater than 10. That would be true. And if I pick x equal to 10, it's still true. 10 is equal to 10. So this is either true or false. Therefore, x greater than 10, that, that is a statement. So a statement. Okay. Let's look at part D. What is your name? Well, that is a question. I can't really say it's true, it's false. There's no true false to it. So it's a question, not a statement. The sentence is a question. So this is statements. Now let's look at compound statements below. Okay, compound statement has connectives, so it's very important to identify them. So let's look at the first one, not p. The not here is the connective, so not. And we use this symbol for not. So not p in symbolic form will be not p right this way. And a formal name for it is conjugation. So not P, I can also say negation of P. Let's look at the second one. Okay. The second one I have P and Q. The connected word here is and. So and is my connected word. I use the symbol upside down V here, look for and. So P and Q in symbolic form, I have P and Q. The formal name for it is called conjunction. So conjunction of P and Q here, conjunction PQ. So formal name, conjunction. Next one, let's look at P or Q. P or Q connected words here is or. 
or so I'll write or and I use the notation upside that the V kind of like V for the notation so I have P or Q in this case in the formal name we call it disjunction so or same thing as disjunction next let's look at if P then Q so here if then is my connected word. Oh, let me highlight it. So if then are my connectives. If something, then I have something here. Because whatever that is. So in symbolic form for if then, we use one side arrow here to indicate if then. So if P then Q, we write it as P for Q here. And the formal name for is called conditional. So we call this a conditional statement. Now, let's look at the last row. The last row, I have P if and only if Q. If and only if here is my connective. So if and only if. In symbolic form, I use a double arrow here for if and only if. So P if and only if Q looks like this. The formal name for it is biconditional, so biconditional statement. So these are my compound statements. Now let's look at some simple true table. Okay. Now here, I'm going to determine a true value of a conjunction and disjunction, and maybe look at a negation as well. So here, on the left-hand side, over here, the left-hand side here, this is called the standard form of a true table here. Notice that I have two components, P, Q. So to n equal to 2, where n is the, is the number of components. Okay. Notice that the true table on the left, the true table here, it, hide, it gives me all possible combination of P, Q using true, false. So I have two components, and each one has two outcomes. So I need 2 to the two square, which is four rows in my true table. We'll discuss a little bit more in the part two of the video. So now let's look at the middle part of negation. So we say the negation, I have not P. So when I feel not P here, I'm going to use the P. So the P here I have is I set it up as 2, 2. Half of them is true, followed by the second half is false. And for the PQ component, I use true, false, true, false, and alternating them. So now, so if I look at not P or negation of P is the opposite of my P here. So not P, I'm using this row over here to do my negation. So in P here is true, so negation of true is false. Okay? And in the second row, P is true, so negation of true is false. And in the same manner, I can finish the column. So false is true, true. And can, similarly, I can do the same thing for negation of Q. So this is false, true, uh, false, true. Okay. Let me erase that to make it a little more clear. Now, let's look at conjunction. But for the conjunction N here, and let's recall some rules that went over in class. The conjunction P and Q is true if and only if both components are true. So I need both components to be true to have a true value true. So let's look at my first row. In the first row over here, I have true true. So true true, both components are true. So the true value for uh, P and Q must be true. Let's look at my second row. The second row I have true false. Okay, I have again n is true if both components are true. In this case, one of them is false, so therefore the true value is false. Okay. My third row I also have false false. Last row I have both components are false, therefore the statement must be false. Okay. Now let's look at column, the next column, which is called the disjunction. And we call disjunction all here is true if P is true, if Q is true, 
or if both components are true. So let's look at the first row again. The first row I have true true, therefore the statement here is true. The second row I have true false. Well, if one of them is true, it's true. So therefore this must be true. Similarly, the third row is true as well. Let's look at the last row. The last row have both components are false, therefore P or Q is also false. So this completes the two-day for part one of the lesson. In part two of the lesson, I'm going to go over an example of constructing a two-table. See you next time.